Let's talk about optimization and debugging. First of all, what do we understand under optimization and debugging? Both are part of the daily job of a lighting TD. We often have to solve technical issues to get a shot out. Examples are render times, memory consumption, render noise, or crashing renders. So knowing where to look when you debug or optimize your shot is quite important. Having a step-by-step -step and analytical approach when debugging will help you identify the problems faster. And your first step should always be to look at either the render logs or the render stats. If you set off a preview render, switch to the render log tab and you will get logs from the current renders, including at the end of it, some stats as well. Looking for errors in the logs is basically your first step. Warnings, errors and crashes would get registered in the log. To understand error codes, look up the 2D Light help online. Not all errors are problematic though. So refer to the documentation if unsure. If you look at the logs right now, you can see the, the errors 3D Light is spitting out about not being able to auto convert the textures variables. The reason is because the texture variables actually point to the actual texture path on the geometry, and those are already converted, hence we can ignore these errors. Nevertheless, if the render crashes or you have render issues, looking at the logs might give you pointers to what the source is. The log files unfortunately don't give you any stats on memory consumption and render times. For that, you will need to switch on the 3D Light monitor, which you can do if you go to Edit Preferences 3D Light and set Render View to both. In the 3D Light monitor, if you switch on the sidebar, you will be able to access the Stats and Stats Plus pages, which will give you information on CPU time, shading samples, and memory consumption. If you use other render engines, you often also have certain AOVs available, to help with debugging. 3D Light does not have these kinds of e AOEs in this version, but here are some examples. This is an example of a heat render map, which can show you where your render spends most of its time. A sample AOV helps you identify regions which get oversampled or undersampled, and helps with analyzing which parts of the image needs optimization. Noise will also be one of the most common problems you have to solve. And most of the time, to fix noise, you will need to increase sampling. 3D Light, with usability and simplicity in mind, doesn't give you many controls to change the sampling. In fact, there are only two dials you will need to worry about. Unlike other render engines, where you have separate controls for changing the samples for direct, indirect, scatter, and refraction samples. For those render engines, when you encounter noise in your renders, it is important to know where your noise is coming from. Is it noise in the shadows, in the indirect bounds, or specular, just to name a few. What helps to figure out the source is to look at the shading AOVs of your render. And once you have identified the source, you can dial up the samples for the specific type of noise. While the sign sounds more efficient, it adds more complexity for the user. In 3D Light, if you encounter noise, your main choice is increase, increasing shading or pixel samples in the globals node. In my experience in the time I've worked with 3D Light, I hardly had any noise issues, and if I had, I mostly just increased the shading samples. And to identify if my image is noisy or not, I usually take my image and increase the brightness by one or two stops and gamma up the image a bit. If I don't see any noise in the shadows, I would consider my image noise free, even if when brightening the image up more, you would start seeing noise. So most of the time, shading samples of 64 to 256 have worked quite well for me. If I render a sequence with animation, samples might need to be a bit higher to com combat temporal noise. Though. The highest I've had to go to was 512 samples, but those were extreme cases. Now let's take a look at the DL settings node under quality settings. You can find the pixel sample settings. Pixel samples come in, comes into play with motion blur, very fine high frequency detail or lines. Think helicopter rotor or fast motion. For those scenarios, you might need to increase your pixel samples. Nine should be okay for most cases. And if you need, you can increase pixel samples to 16 or 32 at most. Pixel samples are decoupled from shader samples, so there is little impact on render times, but memory requirements can go up. 
Volume have separate sample settings, which is desirable since volumes are costly to render. You also need lower samples to get reasonable results in 3D light. 16 is a good starting value. Increase as needed if you have noise, but you will have to tread carefully as it is a balance between noise and render times. Pixel filtering and filter width don't impact the renders but can help increase or decrease the sharpness of your image. Blackman Harris with a filter width of 3 is generally a good default. I rarely ever had the need to change the filter settings. There are sharper filters available like sync, but often these introduce artifacts and negative values, which you might not see immediately, but always end up being an issue in comp. From the optimization point of view, motion samples can be a factor, if you are rendering still frames or rendering subframe motion blur. The higher the motion samples, the more expensive the render, so keep this value at the lowest possible number. One, if you don't need motion blur, and if you need motion blur, two can be enough most of the time. Maximum ray trace distance drives how far a ray travels before it considers not to be able to hit any geometry. You want this to be at a reasonable high value to make sure you incorporate the entire scene, but as low as possible to reduce render times. Keeping the default should be fine for most cases. The next section is maximum ray trace depths. Here you can set the individual depth limits of how many bounces each ray type can do before being culled. Diffuse depth will drive your indirect bounce. You need at least a value of 2 to get indirect and 3 is a good average. Diffuse bounces can be quite costly, so keeping them low is desirable. Reflection depth of 2 will be enough in most cases, but if you get black reflections, you might need to increase this number. Same as diffuse, increasing the depth can be costly. Refraction depth plays a big role in transparent, refractive objects like glass, eyes, water, and so on. Depending on your scene, you might have to increase the number. Here is a special case in 3D Light as it is handled akin to volumetric primitives. To get correct results, a depth of 4 is minimum and you might need even more. So these are the main knobs you have to optimize your renders for 3D Light. Other ways of optimizing your renders are hiding geometry, splitting your renders up into different render passes, switching to polymesh instead of subdivision surfaces, and or decreasing shading complexity. Especially splitting your shot into reasonable passes can help save render time, if you can reduce the amount of re-rendering you have to do when your shot changes. And you can be specific about the parts or passes you re-render when, when you update the shots. The last thing I want to mention are the Katana documentation resource links. We have done a few expressions while creating our template and I've prepared a few Lua scripts, but I haven't gone much in depth as that would go beyond the scope of this course. If you want to look more into scripting and expressions, Katana has really good documentation and reference. Go to help, API reference, you, and you can find reference and help on parameter expressions cell statement expressions and opscripts. Those references are really useful in your daily work in Katana. If you need further explanation on all the different notes we have used, take a look at the online help and the developer guide. Also, if you want to find the Katana file examples to figure out how certain workflows work, Katana comes with example projects which you can find under help and example projects.